Hey guys, so we are testing out a bunch of Holy Grail makeup products I have never used or tried before. Products that I've always seen talked about for years, like six, seven years that I've just never touched. So today I'm trying all them out. I mean, I feel like you can tell by my smile that I am very, very happy with these products. I hope you guys enjoy the video, have fun. Don't forget to subscribe and let's begin. For eyeshadow, we're gonna be using the Modern Renaissance palette. So doing nothing crazy on the eyes, I wanted the focus of the Holy Grails to be for the face. And honestly, when it comes to eyeshadow, there's not a lot of products that make me think of Holy Grails. When I think of Holy Grail eyeshadow palettes, I think of Modern Renaissance. I think of Urban Decay's Naked palette that you can't get anymore. Those are the only two that scream like cult favorite, Holy Grail, like old school products, you know? I mean, this is technically eyeshadow, but it's the Stila in the shade Kit and Karma. This is also a Holy Grail. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with Burnt Orange, just with a fluffy brush. I still feel like this palette is such a perfect beginner's palette. The eyeshadows just blend out so beautifully. I know a lot of people's problem with Anastasia's palettes are that they're super dusty. So you know when you go like that, like all the dust, that's one thing. Oh, yep. And you can see, look how dusty it got. And now for the deeper shade, I'm gonna go in with Cypress Umber. I'm so excited to try out these Holy Grails, but I feel like a lot of them aren't being talked about anymore. Like I'm pretty late to the game, but there's so many classics that I just, I've never tried. Okay, so I'm just going in with Tempera for the brow bone. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with Vermeer all over the lid. Okay, now we're gonna go in with the fun stuff again. This is Stila's Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow in the shade Kit and Karma. Honestly, one of Stila's best products. You know that whole like, oh, if all your makeup products were lost or you were on a stranded island, what makeup would you go and like run to and buy? This would be on my list. Okay, next for liquid eyeliner. See like that too, I can't think of a really staple classic liquid eyeliner. Maybe Stila's liquid eyeliner, we can go with that, but that's not really a holy grail or staple to me. Like it's an okay liquid liner. Yeah, I just went through my like 15 liquid liners and none of them really screamed cult classic to me. Oh, I remember why I stopped using it is because the felt part started coming apart. Like you see that at the tip? And then like I pull it out kind of like, oh my gosh, what's it called? You know, on pillows or blankets, it just keeps coming off of this and then I pick it off and then like a new one forms. And then once it starts getting messy, that's when you draw a thicker eyeliner and it just gets thicker and thicker. I remember this is why I don't use this eyeliner. It's because for some reason, it's just so easy to mess up with this eyeliner and I just keep making it thicker and thicker. For mascara, I'm gonna be using my Too Faced Better Than Sex waterproof mascara. I mean, the Too Faced Better Than Sex one, the regular one is a holy grail. I feel like Benefit's Roller Lash Mascara are holy grails. Personally, for my really straight lashes, I need to use a waterproof mascara. And then for lashes, like, duh, Ardell's Demi Wispies, I feel like are a holy grail. I'm not sure what lashes these are. These are Ardell. Obviously not the Demi Wispies, but I just know these are Ardell. Okay, finally, let's go on to all of the new stuff because oh my gosh and there's stuff dropping off these are all the new things they have just been sitting here ever since sephora sale which was what like two weeks ago okay so let's start with the whole reason i wanted to do this video on nostalgia's brow wiz well technically my nyx micro brow pencil is why i wanted to do this video because after i used this and it being so good i was like if this is so good i wonder how good the anastasia brow pencil is so i'm actually very curious because i have made in korea oh i have swatched this in store and i remember it being super dry so now i'm very curious okay my first time trying the brow wiz after it being out for like a million years okay it's so weird because it looks like nothing's coming out but obviously there is pigment coming out since it's filling in my brows i am not 100 percent sure Guys, if you're an upstairs neighbor, just know we can hear every single step you make. I'm not sure how I feel about this compared to Nick's microbrow. Oh, why does it look really like Ursula vibes? I like that the next one pushes out a little bit 
more pigment because when it comes to like this arch right here or somewhere where I actually have to like draw a line it's easier to draw that line I feel like I can't draw a line with this I mean honestly this is good I really have nothing bad to say about it but it's not really something I would buy again okay let's finally move on to all the face stuff obviously we'll start with primer I have always wanted to use the Smashbox photo finish and I love my Tarte primer so much and that's silicone so I always wanted to try out another silicone primer and this Smashbox photo finish and benefits professional. Oh my gosh, just for years, non-stop. I feel like even now, like these are the primers everyone keeps talking about and loves. Like again, old school, holy grail, cult favorites. Same vibes as the Tarte one. I can't remember what everyone's problem. I know so many people really don't like silicone primers, but I do. I feel like they're the only ones that really fill in my big but I can't remember what the reasoning was or what was like bad about silicone primers because there are so many primers that brag about being well not brag you know but their thing is oh we're silicone free like we would never put silicone in our primers and I'm just curious I'm like what what's what's wrong with it because all my favorite primers are the silicone based ones okay next foundation foundation is not something I mess around with and I feel like I've used all the holy grail foundations back in the day makeup forever's hd foundation that really was a good foundation I used up all of that luminous silk foundation that is honestly still my favorite foundation ever but i'm not gonna be buying it again because it's not cruelty free i feel like too faced born this way is a good holy grail one with the born this way foundation like i can't explain how it's good it's not too thick it's not too thin it just covers up really nicely i just feel like this is such a staple i can't remember if it was a tiktok but i was watching something and she was talking about she didn't like it because it oxidizes but mine does not at all i've never had that problem with this all right if you want to see oxidizing then you can just watch what the hourglass foundation i was gonna say what the whore glass what the hourglass foundation did to my skin speaking of <laughs> i was gonna say it again speaking of whore glass speaking of hourglass we are going into their concealer. I mean, everyone knows Tarte's Shape Tape is a holy grail. That was one of the rare makeup products that I have actually finished. I've been through three Tarte Shape Tape concealers. NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, that's one. If I'm bringing up a holy grail product and I'm not using it or didn't buy it for this video, it's either I already have that product or it's not cruelty free. I'm just naming the products that I think of like that first come to my mind when I think of a holy grail. So I did get both their concealer and their setting powder. Okay, setting powder, Laura Mercier, Duh. Um, what else? Let's see how the concealer works. I'm hoping. Oh, that looks a little bit too light. Okay, not horribly too light. Um, it's setting a little bit faster than my Tarte Shape Tape. It's a little cakier, like it's thicker because the Tarte Shape Tape one thins out when you spread it out but this is kind of staying in the spot this sets way faster Ooh, that's that's a beautiful brightening i can't tell if that's because of the color i feel like this shade is a lighter color than the color i use with my tarte shape tape so i'm wondering if that's why it looks glowier interesting okay that looks airbrushed and i didn't even set it yet i did put a little bit more on this eye that's why it looks a little bit cakier in the mirror but now after spreading it out okay see this reaction this is what i'm expecting i want to be this shocked when i try out all these holy grail products okay now let's go with the hourglass veil translucent setting powder oh that feels nice i didn't know the hourglass one was like a little bit yellow there's a tiny bit of a yellow in there with how expensive this is i wouldn't use this to bake i mean i never really baked anyways okay that is one that's impressed me so far see i feel like everything is gonna work beautifully together because they're all holy grails now i'm wondering how one would work with a crappy product you know okay we have blush lipstick bronzer and highlighter okay so let's go with bronzer i'm gonna be trying out the physician's formula butter bronzer let's see how good this is because I still don't really have like my perfect bronzer or contour. I don't know why companies put stuff like this anymore. 
Like, does anyone really use those? Come on. And I just, I feel like it's a waste of plastic. You're wasting a lot of plastic throwing this in there. I'm going to use my Real Techniques 450 just because it's more angled. I bought this for blush and I have been liking it for blush, but I feel like it fits really perfectly for contour. I think that's what this is for. It's very nice and soft and buttery. Okay. I usually use a bronzer that's deeper than this. It's better to build up versus going straight on. Okay. So I'm tapping that on. It looks, it looks darker in the camera. It's blending really beautifully, even though this isn't technically what I would blend for my bronzer. Usually I'd get this Real Techniques one, which I probably will do eventually. Once I start blending any kind of bronzer, there's always some patchiness. Right now, I don't see any. Hopefully it stays that way. Yeah, I just... Oh, it smells like coconut. Okay, that is blending out beautifully. That was it freshly put on, not blending it out. And then that is blended out. Wow! I don't know why I'm shocked that I'm shocked. Of course I was going to be wowed. I am using holy grails, but I don't know. I just, I didn't expect to be so like shocked. Yeah, I'm just loving how well this blends out. For some reason, I can be going like this for so long with bronzer and it just never blends out. But this is blending out really beautifully. Wow. Okay, when I think of holy grail bronzers, Nars Laguna benefits hula bronzer. I did get a benefit hula bronzer sample and I've used it so much, it's not a holy grail to me. I feel like that looks patchy on my skin and it doesn't blend out nice. So far, this is my favorite bronzer I have ever used. I don't really like bronzing my forehead. That's the first thing I notice on people is when they have bronzer on their forehead because you can always see the bronzer and then the line. Since I always catch that, I don't like putting it on my forehead. But yeah, since we're trying out the bronzer, I'm gonna try it out everywhere. Next for highlighter, this, oh my gosh, when this came out, everyone was obsessing over this. It's the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Blossom Glow. Oh, that's really pink. I wonder if that will be too pink for me. Okay, beautiful. I'm not a fan that up close, I can see tiny sparkles. I don't like highlighters that have tiny sparkles, even though you're not going to see it from afar. Oh my gosh, dude, you didn't even put on blush. I knew I was missing something. Let's leave the highlighter there and then let's try blush on this side. This one, duh. Everyone and their mom always talking about this Charlotte Tilbury blush. Swish outer shade across cheekbones. Pop glow onto cheeks and temples. Wait, what? Okay, so I'm gonna swatch it for the first time. I didn't even swatch it in Sephora. Is the nipple supposed to be a highlighter? Okay, so that's the nipple. Kind of highlightery, but I don't see any glitter or sparkle in that. And that's the boobie. And that is them mixed. So boobie, nipple, mixed. Let's mix them because I'm sure that's what everyone does. Okay, beautiful. I can see the sheen from, I'm guessing, the nipple. Oh, that's really pretty. Okay. Close up. It's giving NARS orgasm vibes. Again, another holy grail. I remember my best friend and I, we were like 19 and we walked into Sephora. NARS orgasm was like such a huge thing and like there was a whole display. I took a picture. I still have that picture. I'll, I'll probably put it up here. And we were like giggling like schoolgirls, like hee hee, oh my gosh, it says orgasm. But that was like 12 years ago. And yeah, I, I never bought it. It looked like there was too much gold glitter in there. And this is kind of, looking up close, this is kind of giving me that vibe. I'm sure people have compared the two and they probably look nothing alike. But looking up close, this is giving me NARS orgasm vibe. Ooh, I actually really like that. I did not want to like that. I did not want to like that. I have enough blushes. I was like, you don't need another blush. I mean, come on, does my skin not look super glowy and like highlighted and beautiful? Should I only use Holy Grail best products ever? You know, it's good if I can't stop smiling. This is how I felt in my cream to powder video. Product after product I was putting on, I was so in love with and I was so happy and I feel like I looked my best. And that is how I'm feeling right now with these products. The Wet n Wild highlighter is the only one that I'm not like super in love with. I think because right now nothing is beating the Rare Beauty one. I don't have anything that's beating this. The Mary Luminizer from The Balm, that is an amazing holy grail staple highlighter. It's a little bit too much and too bright. That's if you want a blinding highlighter, but I feel like this, this is just such a holy grail. Okay, so let's see if the highlighter diffuses this blush a little bit. 
So Charlotte Tilbury blush already. It's my favorite blush I've used so far. That's the only blush I would actually wear outside. I would never wear blush outside, but I feel like since there's a tiny bit of glow, it's also like a natural highlight. The Hourglass Concealer and Powder just made my skin look so smooth and airbrushed. I feel like the Tarte Shape Tape one doesn't cover up my dark circles as well as the Hourglass one did, but I can't tell if it's because this is a lighter shade than what I use for my Tarte Shape Tape. I'm not even thinking about putting on eyeliner. The fact that it hasn't even crossed my mind to put eyeliner on. That's crazy, like that's how like in shock I am that I'm not even thinking about putting in eyeliner. So we're going in with this staple, our holy grail is the Urban Decay 24 seven one. This is very old school and I just wanna remember, this is my first time using it again in like seven years. So I just wanna see how good it is. And it sucks because with eyeliner, you cannot get the best of both worlds because the very creamy ones, the ones that feel good sliding onto your eyes, those are the ones that are easy to wipe off, the ones that give you raccoon eyes. But the ones that are harder to blend, those are the ones that stay on your eyes. It's very hard to find the best of both worlds this is why I'm still testing out a bunch of eyeliners. But again, even though this is so creamy and black, just the fact that I can just wipe it off with a tissue isn't good. Okay, let's finally put on lipstick. I mean, you better blow me away, Charlotte Tilbury, if your blush and also my favorite highlighter is from Charlotte Tilbury. I better be blown away. Ooh, that Urban Decay eyeliner is really dark though. Even for me. Okay, so this is her lip liner. Also Pillow Talk Da Sasha. That lip liner was so easy to dry on. I have such a hard time with drying on lip liners. Maybe a little too pink for me, but we shall see. Very nice and creamy. Not a nude I would go for, but I actually really like it. Never when I thought that I would see the day where I would think that I put on too much eyeliner because I need eyeliner like so much. Like I feel like I can't live without it, but this is the first time since everything was looking so beautiful where I was like, dude, I don't even need eyeliner, but I wanted to try the Urban Decay one because again, it's another holy grail and I bought it, I had to try it out. But yeah, now I feel like it's a little too dark. Do I even need to do a rundown? I feel like I've already done a rundown. <laughs> what about like a rapid fire rundown? Okay, rapid fire, primer. I cannot tell you right now anything much about it. I feel like because this guy is working behind the scenes and I can't tell what he's doing. But so far, I loved him. I love my silicone primers. There was absolutely nothing wrong with him. Next, we have the Hourglass Concealer and Setting Powder. This is what I thought was gonna be my least favorite because setting powders, they don't excite me. Same with concealers. I think because I only stick to one concealer, it does its job, but I was just so impressed and wowed and didn't know that my skin could look that airbrushed and flawless. These kind of won. Well, they won along with the Charlotte Tilbury blush because this is my blush. This is what I want my blush to look like. It's not too intense. This just looks so natural and beautiful. Physicians Formula obviously also very wowed. I was shocked how beautifully it blended out. I was scared because it's really deep. It blended out beautifully. It wasn't patchy. Like it truly is butter. Like it feels like butter. It blended like butter. Wet n Wild, it could be just the color. I think it looks, I mean, come on, like does it not look beautiful? But I don't know what it is. I think because in person I can see the tiny bits of glitter. I don't like glitter in my highlighter. So maybe that's what's turning me off about it because from here from looking at it in the camera i'm like wow that does look very gorgeous the brow whiz it's kind of in the middle brows are brows they're not really like exciting to me i do love it i do see the hype i would not buy it for the price and for the lips pillow talk again i can see the hype personally not really a shade i would go for at least for like a nude lip liner i really like this worked beautifully i'm so glad that i enjoyed practically everything in this video and that i found makeup products that excite me and that i've found a few holy grails already <laughs> so yeah i hope you guys enjoy the video and i will see you in the next one.